Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Art Department Podcast. It's me again, Jan Oschel, here in the studio with uh, my co-host, Emmanuel Chu. And today we're going to talk about the biggest lessons we have learned in our art careers. We're going to have our top five each and we're going to just kind of bounce back and forth. And uh, we'll see what we can share with you guys, what we have learned and maybe things you can avoid. So let's see what we have today. Do you want to do you want to get started with your first point today or sure, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I can start. Uh, and the first point is already going to be, you know, a pretty, uh, pretty heavy topic because it came from a part of my life when I was still kind of starting out, you know, and I didn't really know um, much. Uh, but at that point, I already was at ILM uh, and I was trying to uh, I was trying to sort of figure out what was next for me. And I try, I was trying to become a, a matte painter. So uh, I was going to the, you know, yeah. some of the best matte painters and asking them to, you know, look at my stuff and give me feedback mm. and all this kind of stuff. So that was all fine. Uh, but prior, the job directly prior to that, I was at the ranch. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Um, a little, uh, little bit of uh, uh, a mix up there. Uh, so, so, so long ago, but... Uh, so I, so I was learning to do all this matte painting, and I was at ILM uh, doing texturing and oh, modeling. Oh, you were texturing and modeling. Okay, and, yeah. Right. So that, that's what I was at ILM for. But I was on the side trying to learn to be a matte painter. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the same time, uh, the project I was on was a ILM um, sort of exclusive project. Mm -hmm. You know, for, you know, it's like an insider project. And, and I was working on it. Uh, and you know, all the good guys, the artists were on it and they were, you know, the concept guys. That's where I met a lot of people like Ian McKay, oh, wow. Ryan Church, George Hall, all those people were there oh, okay. like right across. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, and I would just go over there and just hang out with mm -hmm. them. Right. And we were working on this stuff and they were drawing all this stuff. It was really very inspiring. And, and I said, okay, all right. And, and, and I looked at a lot of drawings and I thought to myself, well, this is, this is really great. Uh, and so I started to say, well, why don't I build some, some stuff, you know, off of, uh, what they were designing because, you know, for myself, mm -hmm. uh, to learn, to, you know, matte painting. Um, uh, so I was doing that and then bringing the work to show, you know, some of the matte painters and they would give me feedback and, you know, after a while, the, the, the show kind of lost its funding. It, it kind of went down, mm -hmm. and and my contract with ILM had stopped. Oh, okay. So, you know, I was basically, you know, well, okay, you know. I, so I started, thought to myself, okay, so now I have this stuff I'm working on, this matte painting, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I'm at home. I'm just doing it. And um, and then I see at that time there's a, a magazine called 3D Artist. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know if you yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, there was this, uh, uh, you know, competition, oh, 3D okay. artists put out this competition. So I said, oh, well, you know, I'm working on this thing. I'm, you know, I'm just alone working on it. And I think I should just submit it. Um, the big brain that I had thought I should submit it oh, <laughs> and see, okay. uh, see what would happen, you know, because I was like, oh, you know, it's good exposure and, you know, get in as magazines good. I mean, you know, we're talking, this is like literally years ago or something oh, okay. you know like a long time ago i know where this uh, is going yeah, oh no yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know this is gonna be great you know like uh, everything and so i submitted it not thinking anything of it and then you know of course they had the sort of the event you know which is where they announced all the winners i go there and of course you know you think it's good luck that you win the thing <laughs> <laughs> you know where this is oh, going no. uh and so I won the thing. It got into the magazine and everything. And, you know, and, and all this while I was waiting for a call back from my alarm. You know, I was like, they're going to call you, but oh. not for the reason you want to. <laughs> yeah. So because I, 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 you know, I wanted to stay working there. And with ILM, that was like it was pretty much contract jobs. Yeah, yeah. Right. So when they have a need, they'll let you know, and they just mm. go for another, you know, contract yeah. um, stint. And so they, they called. So I was like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what projects are going to be and it turned out to be the uh, the hiring manager telling me that, um, that they had seen my award winning image on mm -hmm. in the magazine. Yeah. 
and that um, that that's uh, not right, uh, and that they won't be hiring me back. Uh, okay. Ever. Yeah. And so to me, I mean, it was a huge hit. Yeah. You know, yeah obviously, yeah. because I, you know, coming from such a completely innocent, mm. um, like I was just like, what? You know, like I didn't even realize oh, what I had okay. done. I was like, what did I do? What? What? Um, and, you know, I sat with it and the longer I sat with it, the more I understood what the implications was and what I had mm -hmm. done and that I had taken number one confidential work. I mean, it, I didn't take the actual confidential work and mm -hmm. showed it, but all the ideas was based off of the art department ideas. Right. So that's confidential right, right. and you can't show that. Yeah. And of course, if I wouldn't have won, then nobody would have known and I would have just kept on working yeah. and, uh, you know, going back to ILM and everything. But that was a huge lesson for me uh, in the way that it really made me think about. And I, I really want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, not, not all, you know, and it may segue into something, uh, something else, but uh, it really made me think that I'm very, you know, you're responsible for what you put out there. And sometimes um, if these big hits come, it's not, you know, it's not the studio's fault. They have every right to do that. Um, and they have every right to not want you to post that stuff. And you didn't, I didn't even get permission. I didn't even know to get permission. Mm, interesting. Yeah. yeah. That, that was just stupid, you yeah. know, in, in the end, that was really all that was. Uh, but, you know, I, I mean, I'm lucky I didn't get sued or any of that kind of mm. stuff. And, you know, it wasn't, they knew there was no malice. Right, you know, right. I didn't mean to or try to do anything. But the the, the bigger problem here is um, that even though I didn't, he's like, I can't hire you back. Hmm. So I was completely blacklisted. Oh, no. I was completely blacklisted. And that blacklist, I mean, I, thankfully, it was about you know, 10 years or wow. so. <laughs> yeah. So I did time. end up going back to ILM to work. Yeah. Because that hiring manager had gone, <laughs> and, you know. But you know, even even though I mean, he's not his fault. Yeah, of course I mean, not. It, yeah. He had every right. Yeah. Um, and I, I think one of the lessons I really learned was that uh, you have to be really careful with the stuff that you put in your work. Yeah, true. Uh, and you know, how, you know, and th th just you know, again, you know, me and Stacy talking all the time, uh, and we're talking about this. It, this particular experience and also the, 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 the copyright uh, issues that happen with our industry. Right. Uh, and this, this can be come from fan art, you know, uh, this can come from a lot of different things, but I, I think, um, you know, for me, that was a really huge lesson that I, you know, it, it really, mm -hmm. it kind of turned my world upside down, yeah, well, you know, course, and I didn't course, even, yeah. I didn't realize a lot of this yeah. stuff. And I thought Without to myself, okay, yeah. yeah, I got to learn from this and you know, what is it going to teach me? Um, they really taught me to be more respectful of the work that you're doing now. And especially for us, yeah. right? It's so difficult because when you're on a show, you have to know when you can release the images is right. it's very, you know, like I remember on Spider-Man. Um, this is a while ago, and I was releasing the images. The movie had been out, mm, mm, mm. releasing the images, and and Sony said take it down. Yep. And and it happens. Mm. Uh, and I think, you know, always try, you know, if you can, to ask for permission. Mm, that's true. I think that's number one thing: ask for permission. Indeed, indeed, that's a you good, know, that's the big thing. I better be careful. Yeah, yeah. better be careful. Um, Better be safe than sorry. Exactly. You exactly. know, like you don't want to be blacklisted. You know, yeah. you don't want to leak something out. You don't want to work on a studio and say, uh, you know, let's say you're working at Naughty Dog and they're doing Last of Us and you're doing some Last of Us inspired stuff. Don't do that. Or do it and don't show yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Because yeah. you put it out there. I mean, what do you yeah. think? Right? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I don't think there's a huge, I mean, people I think imagine that there's a huge blacklist of people. Uh, that shouldn't be hired going around and being shared between studios. I think that, that definitely doesn't exist. But yeah, individ in, individual companies definitely have, I think, uh, keep some tabs on on people that um, 
are known to be not trustworthy or whatever. I mean, I actually had a, a not a similar experience, but I think I have I had the kind of the opposite experience when I was working at Lucasfilm because um, I think they they knew that I was quite um, active online even even back then, um, like nine ten years ago. And there was a time where I think I made, a, I mean, you know, I also knew that you had to be very careful working at Lucasfilm as to like the, the kind of side projects you could take on, the kind of uh, freelance work that you were allowed to do. And it shouldn't probably not be anything that looks too Star Wars-y. Um, so I did an, a, a tutorial and a cover image for uh, Imagine Effects. And... I actually went the opposite direction. I said like, okay, like uh, I went to the legal department and said like, so what, what am I allowed to do? Because they want me to do a spaceship. And they said, oh yeah, a spaceship you can't do. And then we went back and forth, back and forth. And um, I was allowed to do like a, like a vehicle, like a sci-fi vehicle that was distinctly different from anything in Star Wars. So I actually had mm. to, I actually had to send it to a Lucasfilm first when i finished it to get it approved and then they said okay okay you can do that um so i i already learned without actually getting into trouble but i i know that there's a fine line between um like when you're on a project for a long time you can't help but be inspired by it for your personal work as well so um you you need to be very that, mindful of very that fine line. Yeah, it's very yeah. it's it's not always that you have to do something completely different. I know that, that um, the, the urge to do something interesting or you figured something out during uh, a client project and you, you, you can't, you really want to share that with, uh, with an audience. Um, so you, you have to be mindful to change it so much that it's not that people wouldn't be able to associate it with that project you're on. Like if you do something right now that looks totally like the Matrix um, or even Matrix fan art, you you can't do that right now, right? Because you you worked on the Matrix itself. So it would be very careless of like, you yeah, to... I can't do anything. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, I mean, because I people are going to... Like people are going to associate and they're going to be like, or like you, you can't even control where people are going to share it. Right. So some, some news outlet might find it, right. That you worked on the matrix and then you do something matrix inspired. And then they're going to be like, oh, like first concept art from matrix by yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's completely out <laughs> I mean, of your that, control. That's the funny right? thing. It's completely out of your control. Yeah, because I, I posted some, you know, and you're probably seeing the slideshow yeah, yeah, yeah. with some of those personal images like Dune. And everybody's going, and there is even one article saying that I worked on, I'm, I worked on Dune, <laughs> and these were the images. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I, yeah, yeah. I, this is just a personal image. It's not even based on anything. Yeah. I mean, just the, the and, pure fact that we we work on on all these projects very early on is like ideal, like scoop material for all the the media websites trying to get um, like the first images. Like everybody's like, I, I just read again that they're really waiting for the trailer from from dune to hit and um, i think everybody who who can get something that they don't care right they don't really care for the, the reporter's job is the writer's job is to to get like juicy information with good headlines right and often our material can can provide um yeah. good material and i mean the amount of times that i was asked um for big websites uh, to get like secret interviews like when i posted that i worked on on 1313 the the mm. infamous uh, star wars game that that um, was canceled eventually that like oh can you talk about this off off the record right i mean there's no such thing as off the record so you have to be ma very mindful of of what you share and even though you feel like you feel very honored right like oh they want to interview me and like oh um, be very careful with this kind of stuff right Absolutely. Well, that's that. So that's one mm. one lesson learned uh, for sure, which was a huge one. Right. Yeah. Um, well, thank, I was thankfully, really unhappy and depressed. Thankfully, it didn't it didn't turn into something more serious, right? Yeah, no, but I you know yeah, learned. So so give us some one of yours. Um, what can I what can I segue into here? Um, I think I mean, for me, um, something that uh, I. 
I learned, I had to learn multiple times and, and kind of forgot about is that um, you should really listen to, to your gut more. Um, like I had many instances, uh, many clients who right from the beginning were very not I, strange. Maybe it's just their personality, how they work, but um, like you can't even call them red flags because a red flag for me with a client usually is like when they, when they try to tell you that they don't have any money or um, this or that, or they want this. And I mean, what, whatever, uh, like they don't want to sign a contract. I mean, the, those kind of things are clearly clear red flags where you don't even start working with them. Right. Um, but then there are like minor, minor red flags, like yellow cards, if you want to, if you want to call it that, right? Not a red card, but a yellow card where you kind of go like, ah, I should be careful. Um, when, when you kind of get a feeling that when, yeah, it's more a gut feeling of like, okay, this is going to be difficult to work with this person together when they, when they don't have any respect for your time, when they don't have, um, when, when you just can feel like, okay, this person works very differently to me and I think it's going to be trouble later on, or maybe people are very unorganized or people uh, like uh, some people just approach working in a very different way than, than I do, or they like, you, you, you never know. Right. So there's multiple, multiple issues, but usually you have your gut tell you like, okay, this is trouble. Like this could potentially be trouble later on. So just be careful right and um i i learned it a couple of times the hard way and uh, i had that feeling in my gut i was like oh it's like this is this is dangerous and even other people told me like oh be careful of that person or that company right they are very very difficult to work with um so and you know but you you go I like us talking about it right yeah. we, we talked about one of those situations yeah, and then you just kind of be like ah it's okay like it's like maybe because a lot of a lot of these kind of things are based on very personal experience and personal um incompatibility in terms of working together so um, once in a while i actually had a very positive experience even though somebody else told me like oh don't do that um, but then more often than not it was like uh, my gut told me don't do it my my friends told me don't do it and I still did it and I paid for it and um, like it, it, it turns into like I don't, not depression but it turns into like burnout it turns you against the job you you chose to do and um, so because you're constantly stressed, yeah you're constantly you stressed know, and, you took and it. pretty much all the the all the, the the things that your gut told you to be careful about they all come true and um I mean, of course, in the beginning, your gut is maybe not as developed in terms of sniffing out these kind of um, potential yellow cards. Um, but the more, the, the longer you work, the more clients you work with, the more developed that becomes and um, the more you, you should listen to it. And I mean, there are multiple things working against your gut. Usually it's your, it's your brain or whatever. Um, like there, there was a situation where I got burned with, with a client and, and, and it turned out, uh, terrible. And then two years later, apparently the client thought the, the work together went well. So they asked me to like come again. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, I, I remembered a bit, little bit like, okay, like, okay, it wasn't the ideal client, but it wasn't too bad. Right. And, um, I also had. You tend to forget the yeah, pain, you for, right? You, you, you forget, forget the pain, right? Hard. And and I also I, I really needed money at that point. I really had uh, mm. uh, no no client jobs for a while, and I was like, okay, I really need to take this job, right? And then like suddenly all the all all your gut feeling that is still there, but you just kind of like push it away. And then of course, and then you you try to ask for a little bit more money, right? So to to make it worth it, and they go like, okay, okay, and. And then suddenly all the, all the, all, all your careful consideration is out the window because of, of other, um, of, of, of other reasons. And, uh, then of course I got burned again and then uh, I really had to cut it off with the client. That was like, I think the first time where I really said, sorry, I can't do this anymore. And usually I, I mm. usually endure and try to keep the relationship, um, 
like intact. I don't want to burn any bridges, even though I know for myself that this I, I don't want to work together with them anymore. But in this case, I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I was to a degree where I was like, no, no. Um, so here's a good question. I mean, what, how, you know, for the people who are in this position or who may be in this position in the future, what is your advice? How, how do you uh, handle that? I mean, how do you make a grace? I mean, once you've, you know, your gut, <laughs> you know, like, okay, listening to your gut is a hard one, yeah, right? Yeah. But I mean, let's say once you've done it, how do you make a graceful exit? Or oh, can so you? Do you mean, you mean how to, how to not get into that position in the first place or how do you well, i guess not get into the position and then if you're in the position and you need to get out well how do you get out it's kind of like uh i think in, in terms of not getting into it it's kind of like like uh, you have to actively prevent getting i mean you have to actually prevent getting into it in in a sense that um think of, like if if you were if you already went through this whole cycle of 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 a bad project then you have to you have to think about okay what 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 got me into it what um did what did my gut tell me that i shouldn't do it and and i still did it but what was the reason for that if it's purely a financial reason then you need to make sure that you prevent um having to do this for the money in the first place so you you need to always make sure that you have more savings than you need um so that's that's honestly the best way to to think about it i think and if you did it for another reason like let's say the project is really good for your resume um then you also need to think about um did this title really have a positive effect on my future hireability like did i really get like uh, did i get a, a new personal connection out of it did i um did i get calls based on that uh, from from new projects did i um, do some really good work that i can share later on um so you need to need to really evaluate what what were the reasons of of like deciding to ignore your gut and once you once you're really into once you're in it and you try to get out Honestly, this is, uh, I think, where um, your professionalism has to come through. And even though you don't like it, even though you're stressed, even though um, you, you dread every day um, starting your, your work on this project, you have to, you have to deliver, um, I think. You have to deliver and, and see it through until the agreed um, end time. Uh, the the uh, like the agreed uh, like delivery dates or um, have you ever gotten to the point where you just couldn't? Um, yeah, I mean, I like, one, I one, like that that one time, and I really it took me a long time to really um, persuade myself to to cut the client off um, because I've never done that before and I haven't done it since, um, and I usually try to just endure it and and go through with it again because you're a professional right like there was, there's going to be times where you don't like the project um and or, or the project deteriorates but i think it's it's really up to you to uh, make the conscious decision to to endure it but of course if it's too if it's too much then honesty is the best way i think to go about it i mean don't tell the your boss that like i i really can't stand you right that, that is not the right way to say it i think um but i mean i think there's you know a lot of different things i think you can actually this is a very good mm. topic uh in a, in a way because i think you know nobody really talks about how to walk away from a client mm. or or nobody really talks about well okay you know let's say listen to your gut i mean that's a very um it's not a it's not an easy thing no, to do no no i mean every we all know like something feels off kind of mm. thing everybody knows and everybody as the more experience you get the more you can sort of have a better chance. But the thing is, I, for me, I think personally, um, I say, I, whenever I get on a show now, I always ask everybody I can about the person I may potentially be working mm -hmm. with. Yeah, that's good. And way. how they are as a person, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, 
that's number one, right? I mean, gut or not, I mean, I, first of all, I mean, the problem is a lot of these people that we talk to the clients, they're quite flaky. <laughs> I mean, at least the ones I'm dealing with because they, you know, you email them, they may not email you back for a couple of oh, days. Yeah, yeah. They, they might give you the one word email and it's like, it's, you know, your gut's already starting to go yellow card, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like you were saying, it's like a yellow card, yellow card. But in the end, they turn out to be fine. They're just a little bit, you know, they're busy and they're not really into writing emails. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, what I do is I ask, you know, basically I have a network of people that I would ask. I say, look, have you worked with this guy? And have you worked with that guy? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you might want to really watch it with him in this area. But otherwise, he's great. Mm, okay, yeah. So getting feedback, I think it's is super, super, super important, and and trying to find something so that you you know it's the same thing. Just do your research right. um, on who you're going to work with if you can. I mean, if you if you if you're going to work with a studio and you do a rough search and there's like tons of people writing that they hate working for the studio, <laughs> you might want to think again. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Or if it's if it's always and, in the news for all the wrong reasons, right? That happens lately a lot then you you have to think about why That's that is right one, yeah. i mean there's still plenty of people and, and yeah, i think go ahead. so i think this is also another chance to really especially for the questionable places to really look at your contract to really put clauses in mm. there that you know because there's so many things about contracts that you just don't even realize and you can't put your own clause into the contract of maybe how long you want to do before you reevaluate all these kind of mm. things um, uh, to kind of protect yourself. But in the end, you know, I've also had projects where I, I had to walk away too, just like you. And I think sometimes there's just no easy way to make, make a graceful exit. Yeah. Sometimes if, I mean, you should try as hard as you can, but in some cases they are just, yes. once you've exhausted everything and, and try to talk it out, but it doesn't work, then it's just like, okay, sorry, it's not working. Right. And that's it. And I think your own sanity, your health is worth much more than, yeah, yeah, yeah. you may burn a bridge and I'm not, I'm not advocating burning bridges, yeah, yeah. right? I'm not saying, Hey, it's great to burn a bridge, no, no, but no. sometimes, um, you know, this is how you make, you have, you know, this is why doing, doing it this episode is, is these are the lessons you mm -hmm. learn and you on more experience from yeah. that. Um, and I think that if you, burn a bridge. I mean, really, you know, be professional, like you said, as much as you can and don't try to screw anybody. But oh, at no, the same no, no. time, you know, and, and I, you know, if you're a reasonable person and you can't work it out with them, then I think at some point you're just going to have to go your own separate ways. Uh, especially if you notice, like if you're, you're mentally having issues emotionally, physically, you know, because sometimes the client you work with can be really toxic. Right, right. And I know you know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, So, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, we all have mm, had that, right? Exactly, right. But it's a good point. It's a good point. Um, that, <clears throat> I mean, the, the way you develop your gut feeling is, is by research, is by the more, the more information you have, the better, right? But of course, like a lot of people don't have maybe a lot of, uh, a lot of contacts that have worked together, uh, with, with that particular person. So, um, and again, it's 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 not an easy it's not an easy uh, thing it's not an easy thing to do um to do yeah, it's funny because i was talking to my my friend today uh, or yesterday and you you know this is you're right about the savings part because you know when you have savings you do you have a much more of a powerful position mm -hmm. because you don't absolutely need to have it but if you're in a position of well i gotta pay rent and i don't have anything exactly then yeah you're gonna have to just take whatever yeah, comes yeah. So you, you, you better hold off on that new Cintiq you want to buy or that new graphics card, right? Always, always see it in relation to, to everything else. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say. Um, yeah, maybe another point, um, that I could talk about, let's see, um, what, well, yeah, can you can go, go first. first before I, okay. do you have something? Uh, no, you or? go ahead. We can, we can bounce back. Okay. Uh, I think. You know, for me, uh, so a couple of things. I think um, I have a. I, I don't. Is this, this is a. Yeah, you could. I guess you could say it's a lesson learned. Um, but it's also uh, talking about how 
good you are to work with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how how you actually pay attention to those things and and i'll just give a quick mm -hmm. example is you know i'm a very i was a very intense guy <laughs> so okay i guess it's just a really nice way of saying I was pretty angry as a person, mm, Okay. you know, and I was like, ah, you know, what about me? You know, and all this kind of stuff. And so I was working, you know, and I had, you know, worked on a couple of jobs with this one particular person. Uh, and he hired me to go work at the orphanage. And, you know, I was not easy to work with. I was very, you know, sort of, um, I guess you could say intense, mm -hmm. you know, I was just like, oh, why do I have to do this? And why do I have to do that? And and, uh, and I felt like the world owed me something, oh, okay. yeah. you know, and 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 I, I I don't know why I was like that. I was like that in my personal life. I was like that in my professional life. And it made it difficult. So um, the person who hired me eventually left. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, well, you know, fine whatever uh you know i mean even when he left i was like how dare you leave the team you know like this i was really confrontational mm -hmm. you know this is kind of how i am and the, even the big boss was there kind of like oh god <laughs> um and then after that i i got a divorce mm -hmm. um and i really sat down to think like if everybody says if one person says something about you mm -hmm. then that person could be completely wrong yeah but if everybody's saying that about you mm. yeah yeah there's got to be some freaking truth in that so you know so i went and i you know started reading books and looking really inside and say hey you know you know i can't keep going mm. like this you know I, life is gonna it's just life's too short mm. um so i really made some big steps in realizing who i was as a person who i wanted to be as a person and i made some changes um, but, you know, fast forward like four years now, and at that point I was, you know, a uh, 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 map painting supervisor. I, you know, I, I had grown a mm -hmm. lot, but I had become, you know, uh, uh, the person I wanted to be, uh, you know, like, you know, if I was uh, working as a map painter, you know, who, who did I want my supervisor to be? I was trying to be that person and, and trying to be a nice person, uh, understanding, empathetic, all that kind of stuff. So now I really wanted to make the transition to concept art. So the next job I go to, guess who's recommending me? The guy who left the orphanage. Oh, okay. He's the guy. So I talked to him and he goes, are you as difficult to work with as you were before? <laughs> and I said, you know what, you know, that's a really good thing you bring up. And you know, we, we made amends and we kind of talked mm. and we kept talking and he, you know, I guess he realized, Hey, I think, I think he's changed enough that I wouldn't mind recommending mm. you. So he recommended me to, you know, to the job. I went there and I got the job and I was doing it. And that was my first sort of real concept art mm -hmm. job. And it was thanks to him. And, and, uh, and he, you know, you know, that, it's, it's not like a direct, I mean, this has happened a lot in the past, you know, where, you know, you, ha I had to learn how to just be and, and try to be a different person so that, um, to, to learn from those mistakes, uh, and then, you know, becoming somebody easier to deal with, um, and not always being so sort of, Hey, you know, what about me? And I just want money and I want to negotiate, you know, like it's, it's more about, you know, are you going to fit into a scenario where you can actually work with people and they can learn from you, you can learn from them and have a general good time, mm -hmm. you know, in the office. And that's important. And I didn't realize that all these people who had hired me in the past, you know, they all, they're coming back, you know, you're going to meet them at some yeah. point. And if you were a jerk, you know, you're going to have a hard time. Um, because this industry is small, mm, right. everybody knows everybody, yeah. you know, as for, for as some, you know, they, they might be like, well, we're going to hire this guy. And then that guy will listen. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> you know, that's happened before. And I'll tell you, I was difficult and I had sort of a reputation to be difficult, oh, okay. um, until I really learned, Hey, it's not all about you. It's about the team. It's about getting the work done. It's about us pulling together to do something it's about other people and so for me it was a big thing to learn and and i benefited in the end because now they're all coming back and giving me opportunities right
because I had changed. Um, so that's a, for me, it's huge. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you ever run into, I oh, mean, yeah, you, yeah. you're so mellow anyway. Oh, no, 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 but I have, I have my own, I have my own stories in that regard. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think anybody would, would tell me that I'm intense, right? So, um, that, that just, uh, oh, not no, not at all. Um, but let me, let me think back. Um, I mean, from a, from a personal point of view and also from a, from a professional point of view. Yeah, there's definitely, um, you know, many things that I, I, I can improve on. Maybe I, I hopefully have improved on, on quite a few, um, probably have to ask my wife about that. Um, but uh, I, I can remember professionally that, um, like, uh, I think it was, it was again, Lucasfilm time. And I think there was a, there was a, like I, I was jumping around between projects quite a bit um, just because I wanted to. And I, I kind of got bored every couple of months when I was in the same thing. So I was uh, I, I was asked to be transferred. So I actually interacted with a lot of different um, uh, teams um, within w within within that division. Um, so I got to know more than than most people uh, do. But um, it was funny when when I transitioned from one person uh, from one team to the next, um, I I didn't do a very good job of of kind of. Um, I mean, people knew my work before they knew me, and um, I think that was at some point a problem, um, because I was kind of like keeping to myself, and um, I mean, a lot of times a lot of people, and especially my wife, tells me that I'm when people first meet me, they have quite a, um, a negative image of, of me because I'm, I'm not the guy who's like coming out and is like, like greeting everybody and smiling and is like overwhelmingly um, outgoing. Right? I'm, I'm kind of more reserved and, and um, I, mm -hmm. I kind of keep to myself and I, I might, I might look very, um, I might look very much like, Oh, I don't want to be here. Like, like get me out mm -hmm. of here. Kind of, kind of thing. And of course that has, um, my wife puts up with it and she, she keeps on telling me to, to do, do better in that regard. And I totally agree. But of course that had big implications also in, in the studios I worked in. Um, now that I'm freelancing, it doesn't, it doesn't matter as much, of course. But, um, when, when I, when I work in a team, right, it's, it's very, important i mean you don't have to change who you are but i think you need to make an effort to um make sure like tell people and 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 be be approachable and and make sure they understand that you are a team player right and there was there was this one time where the pre producer like i mean i finally like i don't know why but i i, I walked over and i walked around uh, more later on just to try to talk to people and get to know the team a bit better and every every once in a while they actually shuffled the desks around or i was put around like i was pushed around with like um different uh, different areas to work together with different team members and it, it took me a while to really open up and, and interact more with them and uh, at some point the producer said like he she, she it was a she actually she's like she's like you know i i thought I always thought you, you 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 were an asshole. You don't want to talk to anybody, and I was like so shocked because the image I had of myself was very different. Like the the image of that I had of myself was like, hey, I'm 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 a, I'm a nice guy, aren't I? Right? And but but the kind of impression that people had of me was completely different. And then she's like mm -hmm. she's like, hey, you're actually very nice, and I'm like, ah, thank you. <laughs> so that was that was like a, that was like such a a shocking wake up call right i'm it's not it's not like that i'm unfriendly to people far from that but it's it's just kind of like thinking like reflecting on 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 the image on on the image you give off to other people is is uh is very interesting and it's something you yeah continuously need to work on in in personal and in in professional life i think right um, because that has big implications on, on, on oh, everything. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's my story. No, I mean, it has a lot yeah. of implications and I would just say for, for people, it's like, um, you know, because a lot, it, this episode is a lot of us just talking about, you know, okay, what we've been mm. through and stuff, but I, I, you know, and it's not always going to have a hardcore, like, Hey, you can learn this and use these techniques, but it's more like just, you know, this is the things I went through. And I, I just think, you know, you tr treat people honestly, sincerely um you know i i think 
you'll get a lot back. Mm. Um, and and these people, just remember that these people that you meet, you know, if, whether you're straight out of school or whether you're still in school, mm. you know, because you know, like that, you know, a lot of graduating classes, a lot of those people are get they get into the all the the the, studio, the jobs, and then you know if you know you're a part of uh, you know, if you're a nice person, they will have no problems hiring yeah. you or even recommending you. So in the end, these are the kind of people that really are going to recommend you or hire you. Uh, it's important for you to um, not not be fake or yeah, you know yeah. to try to act like somebody you're not, but just to be to realize that that's what happens. And yeah. maybe sometimes, if you're an introvert, to try to reach out a little bit just mm -hmm. so that people can know who you yeah, are exactly, a little bit. Right. Because it's important. Mm -hmm. I think you know it's it's not even networking. It's just oh, no, no, you no. know like it's just you know it, it's not strategic. It's just let people see you a little yeah. bit because I think you know it's important. And in my case, you know they saw me all right. So you know thank God I you know I, I mean I'm just, thank God I went through a divorce. That I actually started thinking about why <laughs> is everybody hating on yeah. me because people were yeah. and I was just sitting. What's wrong with me? But in the end, I figured, okay, these are the things that mm. that I can that could be improved yeah. on, and I made an effort to improve on those things because I yeah. knew I was hard to deal yeah. with, and now I don't ever have that problem. Yeah, true. I mean, uh, that doesn't mean you won't ever have a problem with somebody. Yeah, but have, yeah, exactly. It just means, yeah. You know, you're not. You know that there's an asshole part of you, and you're trying not to be. It's that very person. good. Yeah, I mean, it. it what we, like what we're trying to say, right? Is like don't you don't have to put on a fake persona, right? You don't have to have like a. Um, you don't have to pretend to be someone you're not just to appeal to more people, right? That's not what it is. But like you said, right? Maybe maybe like think about what what is, what are the good parts about your personality and and amplify those and dial back the ones that that are not so nice, right? And uh, if you're not sure what those are, I mean, then maybe it's time to ask people that are close to you that know you well to like be very honest about like uh, about that. Right? This has turned so, into a self-help. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> this, I think there's a lot of stuff that you that you just realize and you're more comfortable talking about when you when you're not 20 anymore, right? Because I mean, everybody, when like, when they're 20, they're full on like, like, yeah, I can do it. Like, um, I'm always right kind of thing. And um, I think it's, I think it should, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's helpful. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I mean, look, I honestly, <laughs> people are wondering where, where's the, the, the industry talk, <laughs> but you know, this is what you, you know, everything you do. And, and I'm realizing this now even more is that's everything you do in the industry is the relationships that you build. Right. I mean, look at look at like live action right now. Mm. When there, there, you will never see a job that's listed somewhere yeah. ever. Right. Right? Yeah. So it's always going to be word of mouth. Mm. And if you're a jerk to work with, you, then yeah. there ain't no one going to work with you. And if enough PDs think you're a jerk, you're never going to get work. Yeah. I don't care how good yeah. you are, you're just not going to get work. So this is absolutely crucial. And that's why when I said, you know, how you walk away with something, I'll walk away, you know, from a project or, or something, you really have to think about these things. Make sure that, can you endure this? Can you finish it out? And if you can't, then exit gracefully. Or, you know, how not to be, you know, a jerk, yeah. you know, because if you know, hey, I tend to be a little dry, a little... Mm sarcastic maybe that's not a good way to go mm. on my first time talking to somebody <laughs> just told them yeah yeah right? maybe not yeah stuff like yeah. that yeah. that is very true but anyway what's your next, my next one? one is um let's talk a bit about um maybe like social media i mean by by an extension so um i'm i think what i what i do is uh i i i mean one of the one of the driving forces like for me to like push forward and to improve is like a like a f like a very harsh um self-criticism um and and i i worry all the time like i'm in that sense i'm i'm almost like a pessimist um i always expect the worst thing to happen and uh, i don't know mostly it comes i mean maybe it's a freelance thing but like when when i just had uh, when when i just finish a job and I then I feel like the world is ending like even though I was continuously employed for the last 
two years or whatever. By the time my last job stops and I don't have anything new lined up, I feel like like oh sh like what am I doing? Right, I'm I'm useless. I'm 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 not cons consistently busy. I'm uh, I must be doing something wrong, and I, I kind of drown in like self pity and like worrying and and. Um, oh, everybody else is so busy, right? Then I look online on, on Facebook and everybody and their mom is like posting, like I worked on this and this is what I'm going to do next. And like X got hired by Marvel, X, like Y got hired by Netflix. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have anything. Like I'm useless. And uh, I, I keep on, like I keep on, on, on doing that even, even after working many years. And I, even even knowing that yes yeah, something will come like there's always going to be something popping up as long as i um keep engaged right as long as i um update like my skills as long as i learn as long as um yeah, i keep busy right and um but i beat myself up to a degree that is probably very unhealthy and i don't think it, it needs to be to that degree. I mean, I, I tell myself, okay, I, I need to beat myself up in order to keep pushing, in order to, to keep on doing it. But um, I kind of do that at the expense of everything else, at the expense of, of time off, uh, my health and, all, and everything else. And often it's, it's better to like, just, I don't know, like take a break for a week. Like you, you're allowed to do that. You just worked for two years straight. And um, most people don't even do that. Most people take vacations for good reason. And um, so that's something I, I still need to work on. That's something I'm still not good at. And um, like realizing or grabbing the opportunity when I can to to take time off and not worry and clear my head and it's like okay it's it's, it's okay you can you can take a few days and the world is not gonna end like. Um, yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah, I mean, in the end, you know, what are we doing here? This is not, we're not saving lives. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's, it's, we're not, you know, I mean, in the end, just, I think a lot of times, you know, like you said, you just take, take some time for yourself. And, and even, you know, there's, there's been studios or, or even jobs that, that, that don't want you to take time off mm -hmm. uh, because of X, Y, Z. But, you know, in the end, I always feel like, you know, the job doesn't have your back. Oh, no, of course not. Yeah, uh, you need to have your own back. Yeah. And by what you're saying is just you really need to be really looking out for yourself. Right. Um, but in terms of social media, how, how the, you know, are, are you looking at sometimes social media and going, why aren't <coughs> I more popular? Oh, yeah, hell, yeah, of you know? course. Right. I mean, yeah, because I, I do that. And I was like, yeah, you know, I remember there was a time I was like, well, I mean, I, I think I, I don't forget who I wrote this to I me mean, a couple of years ago. And I was like. How, how did you get like 50,000 followers on Instagram? Like I have 500, yeah, yeah, yeah. how? And, and I don't, and it wasn't because I was like so into being popular, but I just didn't, I was like, how? Yeah, that's true, that's you know? true. And, uh, but in the end, you know, you post something and barely anybody looks at it and you're kind of going, you're kind of useless. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. kind of a gauge of, you know, like, you know, how you are until you get to a point, you know what, I just don't care. Hey, this is what I do, mm. and if you like it, that's awesome. We're on this train together. Yeah. If you don't, you don't. It's true, and it's true. and and like a lot of people are just sitting on the toilet, uh, looking at their phone right. anyway. Yeah. Oh, like like I mean, it <laughs> anything. It's 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 quite yeah. It, it's really hard to. I mean, I I can't wrap my my head around this, and I I I, uh, I should be more mindful of of all these things you just said i mean i'm i'm constantly intimidated by the amount of art that is being put out by the amount of um like because you kind of see the aggregate right you kind of see the aggregate of of what's happening and you feel like everybody is always busy and everybody is working always on cool projects right because like again like this guy posts oh i work on marvel then the next day the other guy posts oh i'm go i was hired by netflix and the other guy is like oh i was hired as a production designer oh i was directing this oh then you think everybody is like constantly like excelling and constantly leveling up and if you don't do that yourself you are not worth being in the company of 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 these peers right and uh, it's very very dangerous and i mean i i honestly like i don't know how i still very bad at handling that because you see like art station like this stuff is like 
pouring out nonstop. And, um, and I mean, it's kind of designed that way that you can, that you constantly feel like, oh, there's something new coming and you're being like fed this kind of information and the, the news feed is endless. And, um, and uh, the, th the thing it's, with, with it's all crazy. this social media, it always also favors the people that have the reach that yeah, already have a follow. So it's always the same people and yeah. you're always going, you know, like, you know, having the best stuff rubbed in your face because yeah, exactly. they've made their, you know, they've made their following. Yeah. And, you know, you good luck going to our station now and opening an account and trying to get your stuff seen. <laughs> good luck with that yeah. because it's, you know, you, you know, that. As soon as you post something, it's like brrr, all yeah. the way in the bottom yeah. already. And, and if like... you have some followers, then okay. But but in the end, you know, I say um, if it's strong work, be patient. Mm. Uh, and 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 it, you know, your willingness to put the work out there to to share your work will come back. Mm. But hey, it's gonna take a while. Yeah. And and don't look at it as somebody not liking your work. Yeah. It's just how it is. It's yeah. just how the social media game is is played at well, this point yeah a lot of i mean a lot of i mean everything is driven by that like algorithm if you like something then you're going to see more of that and then like you said like the popular stuff will always be on top so you're always going to see the stuff that has like ten thousand likes or yeah, whatever and they are always working right because yeah. they're the popular guys you yeah, don't but, see the guy who's not working like exactly. saying oh man i need a job mm. you know, i never ever see those yeah. posts because but i mean and that's part of why i'm on face i'm not really on social media a lot i mean yeah. I mean, on Instagram, I, I, I mean, I check it pretty much once a day and just kind of take a quick look, mm. like five minutes. Yeah, that's probably healthy. Yeah. But I mean, you it's know, like, Facebook, I'm just on the messenger. That's it. Yeah. But then it's like, uh, I mean, it's funny that, I mean, you don't, you don't know how people consume really, right? I mean, you see the aggregate, you see the likes, you see the outcome. But then, like you said, uh, maybe something you slaved over for. A, a, a month or whatever is like yeah being scrolled by by somebody on the toilet or like even like i don't know like some big project you worked on for two years or whatever that results in in like a short movie or something like people are gonna watch it on the on the toilet and go like oh great and then like flip and then watch something else right so you you kind of you kind of like oh is it all worth it this is like well, what is this right and um it's it, it can really screw up your brain and i don't even i mean i don't even know how how young people deal with it that grew up with it now maybe they're more used to it or maybe their perception of 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 how this all works is is even more skewed than ours that kind of for us it came kind of um halfway through um our lives and it's, it's increasing now and maybe we're having a difficulty to adapt to that i have no idea right but it's a uh, well i think though, yeah. but in the end you know the willing the the, the 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 wanting to be liked is all sort of part of an ego mm -hmm. trip mm -hmm. right i mean it's everybody is it's just part yeah. of your ego and if you can somehow try not try to put that energy into making new yeah. art uh, take that energy into making things that mean something mm -hmm. to you then I think in the end, uh, that's always going to, you know, you're doing it for the right reasons. Right. And, you know, we're not all, any of us, we're not going to be egoless. Right. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's a very difficult thing. But I think right now, I'm much more in a place where I'm like, well, if five people like my thing, whatever. But it might be those five people really, you, you've you helped something. Right. Right. I mean, it's like the art, this podcast I'm doing, you know, it's actually one of the things that I think mean the most to me right mm -hmm. now. But just because I feel like it's not just something that I'm doing for me, you know, right. uh, and, and 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 I feel like I'm I'm if 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 one person feels like, hey, I got something from this. That's already really cool to me. I don't need a lot of people to like it. I just need. I just want to share it with people so that they can get some good information right. and that's it. Right. Um, and I feel like as long as you're doing it for reasons like that, you know, you're always um, going to be a lot less likely just to keep looking at likes and you'll feel good about yourself regardless, yeah. you know? But I mean, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I still, I still post an image and go, um, how did it yeah, do? Yeah, of course. I'll of course, look at of course, it. You know, yeah. like, how did it do? How did it do? And I'm like, what? Only that many people look at it? What the hell? And, and, I, and, and I'll be asking myself, is it like, okay, a good example. Recently, I posted two personal images, one of uh, the couple mm, yeah. and one of the ship. Yeah. And I know the ship is more of a crowd pleaser yeah, 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 because yeah. it's just how it is. But I really like the other yeah. one. 
personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was like, what? There's like four times less people yep. liking and looking at that yeah. image. And I'm like, all right. I told myself, you know, look at it as a like a information, right? Statistics. Mm. Uh, but in the end, what the hell are you going to do with that statistic anyway? Just do what the fuck you want. <laughs> that's true. You know, just do what you want, yeah, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah. But it's very hard. You know, I mean, it's very hard. It, you know, and, and I struggle with that. Mm. I'm like, me doing that couple image was like, it's just w- what was in me. Mm. I didn't know what that mm. was. I mean, it's not what you see normally out yeah. there, but I just wanted to do it and I, and I really like it. But in the end, you were so governed by, hey, uh, how many people liked it? Oh, wow, didn't do so well. Maybe I shouldn't do another mm. one. Yeah, I'm exactly. Like, this. Right. I mean, I'm going to do another one if that's what comes to me. That's true. That's you know, good. I know how to put out an image that most people will kind of mm. like because it's kind of like how it is. Yeah. But, you know, I'm like, in the end, I just want to do something that's for me. Right. And and I think I'm getting better now mm. at not not looking at, you know, like reload the page, reload the page, <laughs> look at how, you know, it, yeah. you know, because it's your personal work. You want it to be accepted, yeah. right? It's like opening a gallery show and then having no one walk into your gallery yeah. to look yeah, at right. it. And you're like, you guys want to come in? <laughs> you want to take a look? Yeah, you know? free beer, and no okay. You <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a hard one. If you can get past the point where, you know, I don't care if anybody looks at it, I loved doing mm. it, then you're really onto something. And I th- I'm working towards that, but I, I still have the times when I'm like, what? Only that many yep, people yeah, like yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, Did I do something that's wrong? That's my favorite. How do you not like this, right? And it's like... Yeah, um... and, and this is coming from us, which is we're 10, 15, 20 years professionals mm. here. This is gonna. This is an artist mentality. Yeah. You're not gonna get past exactly, it. And it, right. you know, for the people who are 20 years old and feel this way, this, this, any everybody feels yeah. that way. I, and I'm sure even at some point, even the greats, you mm-hmm. know, like Sid Mead and and even you know, talking way back, Michelangelo, the, you know, Leonardo, <laughs> all those people, they have their issues yeah, at yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah. That's that's a funny and thing it's not, to think about. Yeah, I mean, don't don't think that oh, you just get past it and you never care again. Right. It's a constant struggle, you know. For me, at least, mm, I'm sure, I'm sure, so, I'm, I'm sure. Sid Mead was sitting there and go like, oh, "Bloody hell! Like, why am I not as good as this guy?" It's like, just imagine him. Well, some people are just more naturally like they're more chill about it. Man. Yeah, yeah. But I, <laughs> but I what, what I found is some of these artists they actually just really enjoy doing that art and they don't care what you think. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I read some of the Sid Mead interviews and he was just like, oh, I just like doing it. So I do it and I'm going to solve your problem for mm. you. Uh, that's what I do. I love doing that. And I'm going to do that my way. Yeah, but and I, I don't you know. Like it, you like yeah, it. maybe 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 that's true. But I, I think that you can't you can never completely shut it out. I'm sure he, he managed to find a way to shut these voices off a bit better than most people, maybe. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure he was still confronted with that um, at some point. Yeah. And life, I, I think so. that's why it's good that you are sharing yeah. and we're sharing the fact that hey this happens and this is happening now yeah i mean i'm talking about the image i put up yeah, last yeah, week exactly. and i'm still going anybody like it <laughs> you know, the first day i put it out, i was like oh okay it's not really yeah, yeah. i guess people don't really like my stuff that i really like and then the next day i put it up i'm like i put another one up, i'm like okay well that just got like three four mm-hmm. times as many people yeah, interacting with it and i'm like Oh, hell. Yeah. I mean, it's even on, you know, some of the videos we post, like some do really well, mm. like in terms of like, like a, a lot of people talking yeah, about it and yeah. some, not, and I'm like, and then in the end, I'm like, why am I even wasting time to think about this? <laughs> I should be putting that energy into making new work or getting some sleep. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's hanging that's out with right. my wife. So, you know, Indeed. for the people who are just starting out you know and you're wondering you know if that's normal i would say it's normal and try to find a way for you to you know I, i've taken my my strategy is to take myself a little bit away from social media right. not completely mm-hmm. but just just to the point where you know and, and of course the bigger picture is realizing that likes me nothing yep, of course yeah and the one thing that 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 really rang true to me was it really literally could be some guy sitting on the toilet 
flipping through stuff because he's just too bored. I like that. Yeah, whatever. Exactly. Does it mean anything? Exactly. It's not like he really saw the reason behind why you did what you mm. did. No, or your design and how you solve the problem. He's just like, oh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Maybe he's just like liking everything, you know, like, and what does that mean? Nothing. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. That's, that's the main thing, right? So cool. In the end, just interact with the people mm. that you interact with and get feedback mm. if you want. And if you don't want, just put the work out there and you've shared it. On to the next exactly. one. Exactly. On yeah. to the next one. What's your next point? So my next point is um, how to behave in the workplace, and it's a, it's a really it's a really wide thing, and it kind of goes along to what I said mm -hmm. before, right? But um, the world has changed a lot since I started working, mm -hmm. which was twenty five years mm -hmm. ago, something like that, you know. So at that point, in my first job, I remember that uh, our receptionist was is a female, um, uh, and you know, she was nice and it was a small company and it was, you know, maybe five or six of us total, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. small company, you know, startup. And, and we would, you know, the guys would be in the main room doing what guys mm -hmm. do, playing the music that guys like, yeah. uh, talking, you know, stupid talk, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm in my late twenties, you know, just saying stupid stuff uh, with other people who are saying stupid stuff. And a lot of it, you know, was, you know, male, macho, sex jokes, mm -hmm. whatever you, you want to, you know, stuff like that, you know, and, and, you know, unbeknownst to me, you know, the, the, the reception, was, was very upset. Oh, okay. Um, in the end, and she said, Hey, you know, you guys never even considered that you're with a female. And we'll be like, come on, man, just get over it, man. You're in the workplace here. You know, this is mm. what happened, you know, I, and, and, at that time, I felt nothing wrong with it, mm, nothing mm. at all. She had complained, okay, well, I would tone it down, but you know, we didn't care really. Mm. Uh, and that's just one of those things where, through the years, you know, you realize that, you know, you really, you, you as a society, we're growing, uh, and you have to really start thinking that you're working with people, with people, and people means. You know, female, male, transgender, uh, gay, lesbian, everything, mm -hmm. blacks, whites, you know, Asian, wh whatever you want to say it. We, we work with all different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. We're all just the same. We're just people, mm -hmm. right? So, I, th you know, it's my way of saying just really be careful of how you say things mm -hmm. now. And, and I'm not saying trying to be... Uh, scared you know everywhere you go so oh, i'm just not going to say anything mm. uh but to be respectful right. that there are a lot of people in the workplace that need respect from you right and it's not a small thing because here's one of those things where you could actually say something wrong and they'll come back and go i'm not going to hire you because you really messed up when you you know you didn't address me with the right way or you didn't you know you you made all these you know you talked about all these things that were inappropriate mm -hmm. you know things like that and in this society now i know that sometimes we tend to go a little extreme in terms of the you know in terms of the the uh, uh how do you say it uh, the sensitivity level and uh, might be a little bit extreme at this point because they're they're very sensitive mm -hmm. you know but I think that is not a bad thing because you do have to realize a lot of these things. And there, you know, there are a lot more female production designers, female uh, uh, studio heads, uh, art directors, uh, directors, you're going to have to start working with. And you start giving, you know, doing some of those guy jokes, it's not going to work. Mm, true. Yeah. And you're going to be off the show before you even know mm -hmm. it. So you have to respect that you're talking to a woman. Of course. Hmm. and vice versa yeah. and it's just that but you can't you know you, you can't just you know treat them all like hey guys you know we're all guys no we're not all guys mm -hmm. we're all different people now you have to address people the way they need to be addressed mm -hmm. uh and i feel that you know the reason i i s talked about my first job was because i was clueless right right no clue. zero clue mm -hmm. and i and and that's just like if, you, if that was to happen now, oh man, uh, you know, I would have a stern talking to by the boss, right, I'm right. sure, or maybe even you're out, mm -hmm. you know? So I think 
just be careful because sometimes I think people say they talk to certain people and they don't even realize they're doing it. And they wonder why they never got that job mm -hmm. or why they're not, yeah. you know, the, there's an issue with the networking and you don't realize that you're actually talking um, to a woman mm -hmm. or to, you know, what, you know, whatever that person is and you're addressing them like a guy. Right, right, I mean, right. how's that going to work? Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And you have to be respectful of, again, do your research, right? I mean, if, it, if you're talking to a woman, then be respectful of it. Don't, you know, I, I, I don't know that you should be talking any kind of sexual jokes, even with a guy, uh, <laughs> but that yeah, it's a very juvenile time. thing, but yeah, but it happens mm. all the mm -hmm. time. And I'm like, Oh my God, that's just like weird, but it happens. And I mean, to me, that was a big one, mm -hmm. um, uh, to, to learn and, and I'm still learning it, um, because I'm, I'm like trying to understand more, um, what other people like to be referred to as mm. and, 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 and what the content of what I say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how, how is that coming across? And yes, in the end, it, it can affect their interpersonal relationships, especially when it comes to working with somebody. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think it's, uh, especially in studio mm -hmm. nowadays, half, I mean, you're going to have female, uh, Co-workers and how do you deal with them? Right, right, right. And how do you? I mean, how do you be careful? Um, the the so thing, yeah. though, right? Like you very rightfully said, I think careful is the is maybe gives the wrong idea, right? Because careful um, maybe does not imply that um, it's 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 something wrong, but it's just more like okay, like just uh, just shut up for a while and then you can go back to do your your macho stuff later on, right? That's, that's the wrong idea here, right? Um, that, that it's like, yeah, like you said, more respectful and, and really think about, um, what you're saying. Right. And, um, I don't, I mean, honestly, I've, I've, have you ever run across anything like that? The thing is for me, it's very, I mean, it's maybe it's my, my experience is, is a bit different. Um, I was never, I never, um, I never was like in any groups of of like very dominating like men to be honest like not dominating but like like bros like you want to hang out with people and like get drunk and make stupid jo raunchy jokes or whatever i kind of never was interested in hanging out with those kind of people mm -hmm. so i i knew there there were a couple of those like individuals in the companies i worked at like they were always standing out very much and they, they always had like some other guys that they want that wanted to hang out with them because they were they they had quite a lot of influence they were quite um like the the typical alpha male bullshit right so i and i i always had made like a a conscious decision to avoid these people in 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 mm. like from 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 the very beginning from like school onwards um like even when i was in high school i was consciously trying to avoid these people and that, that is to this day because i think it's it's nonsense and i think there were a couple of other things um i mean i can't help but being a caucasian male so um a lot of the experiences that people share um, and and um, of of like in, like harassment in the workplace and all these kind of things are just not part of my um, experience, right? There was not, not nothing ever directed at me, um, and so in that sense, I never. I mean, I never. So I don't have that experience, and I don't know what it feels like. And and I also made the conscious effort to not do that onto other people. And I mean, I also had always, if, if I think back, like most of the people who were in the hierarchy, like directly uh, or further up above me were always women. So I had like a female producer at Lucasfilm. I had a female marketing boss in the companies I worked at before. Um, and um, I, I worked with some high profile female directors while, while um, freelancing. So um I, I never had like any any like the kind of feeling you have like oh she's a woman like oh she's a woman but she's pretty good like this kind of stupid thinking that um, she, she can't she can't do a good job because she's in a male dominated mm -hmm. industry which is complete nonsense right and and you know I, I, 
and, Sorry, and, and yeah. I know I have a daughter and she's very bossy, so I have to take directions from her anyway. <laughs> but I think uh, you have, I think, a very interesting experience and maybe that has influenced um, your, your thinking more recently when, when you worked in The Matrix, maybe, because Lana, Lana Wachowski is, I think, a very high profile um, uh, director. And um, I mean, she, she used to be, she did a, she's a transgender, right? I mean... Um, yeah. So that that was a very interesting. Has that has that in any way um, um, made you think more about um, this kind of uh, change in society? Yeah. So I mean, originally, you know, I like because I mean, my at the beginning, my second job was with uh, a female art mm -hmm. director. And and I, I never thought, you know, it wasn't any of the old fashioned like when women were below me or anything. It was more just like, well, we're all together. We're all guys mm -hmm. hanging out. You know, it was just more like that. Very innocent. But in a sense, you, you, you it was very shallow. Mm -hmm. You just didn't realize that everybody has a different identity. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be women or men. It could be the introvert versus the extrovert. And everybody is a is a being mm -hmm. so it's like there's no better or worse you know and i was treating everybody the same which you can't really do mm -hmm. that you know because certain no. people need mm -hmm. you to understand that they're not like everybody mm -hmm. else but with um the matrix was it was pretty eye-opening because i went to that job going okay you know let me just read up on what this means yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what what is, what does that mean you know what does trans mean to me And uh, and it's funny when you meet somebody like her that, you know, she's gotten to a place where she's okay. You know, she's very open, mm. very forthcoming mm. about who she is, what she likes. Uh, and it really helps you open your mm. mind. And she's like obviously into the LGBTQ, mm. everything, you know, inclusive Uh, and it makes you learn how to be more inclusive yourself. Mm, right. uh, and I think for me, you know, it was already, I was already aware of these things, but now I was even more aware and it really made me look at their contribution, mm. their fight, mm. you know, because they've had oh, to yeah, fight yeah. to sort of gain respect uh, from the community, from people in general and what that history is. And, you know, this includes anybody who feels like they've been discriminated mm -hmm. upon. It could be anything. Uh, and, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm a disabled male, so I have some form of understanding of, you know, discrimination. Right. Although not, you know, not, not a, I wouldn't say as bad as they have mm -hmm. it. Um, but I, I think it's funny because I meet her and the, the way she treats me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was hanging out with my nephew mm -hmm. uh, who, who had come from Hong mm -hmm. Kong and I was just explaining to him, they said, Oh, you know, you, I, I'm going to work and, you know, I work with a, uh, with a trans and, and, uh, as lady. And then he's like, well, what's that? And I explained to him and then I, it just made me realize that, you know, all this is just, you know, you're giving it to somebody, they give it to somebody else and, and it's making this more known. Mm -hmm. You know, so that everybody's more educated, right. even the kids to be mm -hmm. educated. I mean, of course, that's that's a whole different topic. But I, I, why not? Mm, true. Uh, because I feel like, you know, why don't why shouldn't they know? Because it could affect them. It, it, they, they could be feeling those same feelings. Right. You know, and and so but this job really opened my eyes a lot. And and honestly, the, the matrix itself, uh, the story and everything is. Mm has a lot of that tied into right. it. Um, and, and I feel like, uh, you know, I, I feel like I learned a lot and, that's and that's why I, you know, that's kind of why I brought mm. this up because I feel like a lot of people don't, you know, they, they, a lot of people just want to go, Oh, do some cool demos and do some spaceships <laughs> and do some this, and do some that. Yeah. You know, that's what we yeah. want. But, But this is, I think this is important, mm, very, you know, right. and I feel like, you know, especially if you're working at a studio, this is prime mm. important. This is super important, you know, and knowing how to address somebody, they might be, it may not be a he or a she mm. anymore. It might be a they. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of people who identify with different, mm. you know, ways of, you know, addressing them and then. I think that you have to be respectful of what they want. Right. 
uh, and understand from their point of view. Uh, and uh, most of all, not impose your macho-ness <laughs> or whatever it yeah. is that you tend to do onto yeah. others. Because, hey, you might think it's funny. I guarantee you not everybody's going to think that's yeah, funny. Yeah, that's very so, true. You know, just be careful of what you mm. say. Or, okay, careful not just be respectful <laughs> yeah. of others. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, not don't be careful like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna say that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna say it there. I'm gonna say it there. Just be a person that's more inclusive right, right. in general, and be more aware mm -hmm. of others yeah. in the workplace, and sure. you'll do fine. Very good. Do you have anything else? No, that's good. That's perfect. I think that's, uh, I mean, it's an expansive topic. Um, maybe something we talk about another time more in detail. Um, but oh, yes, uh, so let's move on. Really, yeah. um, so to my last point, it's uh, actually, it's, it's kind of two points, um, which comes from a, from something I do all the time and which is very unhealthy, which is I, I, I tend to live a very one-sided kind of uh, lifestyle when I get really busy with uh, something and um, let's say I, I'm gonna get really busy with a job I like I kind of tend to prioritize um, that over everything else I, I I prioritize it over my health I prioritize it over um, my personal work and what I what I enjoy doing over personal time as well so I think um, Again, there was there's times when I feel like, okay, I need to give this project everything I have. And um, I think at a time that that for that was actually um, when I went to FCD, when I went to school there, I mean, it, it, it was a very crazy schedule where you're supposed to work all the time. And um, maybe maybe it was a good decision at that point to do that. But at the end of it, I mean, I, I tend to emphasize the the positive aspect of it, the aspect of like hey i i went through this and i slept two hours a night and uh, i i i i turned my career around and i got a job at, at lucasfilm blah, blah blah so of course that happened but the the expense like the the sacrifice i had to make was my health like i was in a really bad position how did that show through sorry i mean i how did that show i through? um like because I was also a student, I didn't have much money to go eating at like fancy, healthy restaurants. It was always like the really greasy, cheap food at the at a food court next door, right? Like too much Indian food, too much like cheap Chinese food, and um, and I just felt like I mean throughout the study, I already felt like okay, like this is getting really hard. Um, I wasn't I wasn't overweight or anything, right? But just in terms of like sitting all the time right sitting like forcing yourself to sit down like 16 like 20 hours a day is really bad for you so um so you weren't feeling yes good. i was feeling terrible and i mean i i didn't go to I, it wasn't to a degree where i had to go to a doctor but it was just like constant fatigue and i mean i kind of pushed i mean not sleeping enough is definitely part of it but of course um nutrition and all that kind of stuff also adds to it so it felt like always like you i was getting barely by on i was running on fumes basically after maybe the initial like three months so the the rest of the nine months i was just kind of barely surviving and you kind of accept that as a as a way of life almost and then even continuing after fcd i mean i was i was doing my day job and but then I was so in that treadmill that I, I forced myself to like continue to work like that, like even after after FCD was done. So like every every evening and night I would work every weekend I would work and it, it didn't even occur to me that that was like maybe something I should not do. Um, I mean, of course, it helped me to to grow a lot faster past uh, the school years. But um, I mean, it's it's really not conducive for your health it's really it's really bad like i i gained a lot so what's some things you can do to change that now i mean if you had to go back oh, where, where, how would you i mean change? it's it's uh how would i change it i mean i even like back then i was like uh, late 20s early 30s and i was like okay i can still abuse my body to a, a certain degree so you you kind of can ignore mm -hmm. you True. can kind of ignore mm -hmm. all those signs but i mean what i would 
change like i mean i always say like i don't i don't regret anything doing but i mean maybe maybe th that i regret um even though it feels effort like it, exercise it, it, when you're young feels effortless and it feels like it doesn't it doesn't do much it's like oh i can, I can just run like 10k like i don't know no big issue right but um five years later the the thing might look very differently um so i think what what i would always recommend is is when it comes to health um is that you 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 develop um a, 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 a regimen that you can keep up um consistently even when you're busy it does not mean you have to look like schwarzenegger it does not mean you have to run marathons it's maybe actually the opposite that you figure out a way how to stay active and to counterbalance the sitting and uh, the probably bad eating habits you have by by um, being very active by being um, by by I don't know get a standing desk or like run run a lot or just do things that you can do without much. Um, time or money investment because I mean you can say like oh I, I like to go to the gym but it, it's recently gotten so expensive or or COVID or blah 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 but then I mean nobody's going to tell you like you can still get get running shoes and, and go out and run right without any problem so I think finding a sustainable consistent exercise regimen even even when you're 20 is very very important um, and of course, just if you, like eat well, right? Um, don't don't eat all the hamburgers in the world, um, but that goes without no, that's, saying. Those, those, those are those are really good points, and and honestly, that's a you know I mean that's a big issue, uh, and I think there's so many ways you can do to, to sort of amp up your exercise. I mean, right, even now in COVID yeah. times, I don't know, play table tennis. Yeah, all you gotta do is look up calisthenics, mm. you know, home home gym, yeah. home workouts. There's tons of stuff out there. It's just a matter of do you want it or not. But I, <laughs> I think that the most important thing, or one of the other important things, is is um, I know that on a job that I. Uh, I didn't know how to handle stress mm. at that time. Mm. And I think that that, I mean, you mentally need to also be ready to um, handle the job. Uh, and that can actually do a lot to you mm. and it could hurt your health. Mm. You know, stress can well, yeah, kill yeah, yeah. Uh, and for health. I mean, you can, you can do all the workouts you want, but if you're going to be stressed out mm. the rest of the time, oh, it's yeah. still not going to be good. Yeah. So you have to, figure out a way to de-stress mm, mm. and sometimes exercise is yeah. that sometimes reading sometimes whatever it is for you you know do that and we you know we've talked about that briefly but just remember that a lot of this is from the mind mm. from how you're processing things um and you can work out till you're blue in the face and if you <laughs> that's not working that's yep you're gonna be a very very angry you. hulk if you do yeah, that yeah, yeah yeah so i mean but but definitely I, I but i found that if you do a regular regimen and you keep it up don't don't do anything crazy exactly. but do something yeah. you know, like half an hour mm. a day uh maybe five times a, a week and and you keep that up and you're going to start feeling a lot better yeah. the thing is right with uh, like, with, with overly heavy exercise it, it might I think in the beginning, there's always that feeling of like, yeah, I can do it. And like you feel your muscles grow a little bit and you 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 um, you feel like Arnold and, and you want to continue that. But it's actually very dangerous because if you, if you do too much, I mean, there's, of course, the risk of injury anyway. But I think people who, who work out harder in the beginning, they're more likely to drop that exercise again because it stresses your body so much that you maybe like need a day like a, a break for a few days you have like muscle ache like uh, um, like crazy but if you if you slowly ramp up or if you again find find a thing that you can do consistently um, um, you you're far more likely to to make it into an habit make it into a habit and that's really what you what you need to do and again yeah the trick yeah. is to make it into a yeah, habit exactly. it's very it's very difficult because i mean um it, it might maybe when you're younger it's, it's it's way easier to kind of like i don't know go running every day but then you just 
you just drop it for like one or two days and and the habit is gone you find all sorts of excuses i've, I've been there so many times like after after fcd i i started running like a madman um, just to shed off the extra weight i was get, i gained and just to become more healthy and i i ran like hours and hours and hours and um and went from one extreme to the other so i went from extreme of working i went to an extreme of of running and then but again I, I i dropped it and i didn't drop it like uh like i really dropped it from one day to the next and then it took me some time to to get into it again and then i got really into like in, went to the gym all the time and did that religiously and then i stopped that again and i always wish like why why i mean it's the hardest thing to do just to kind of like find something that you enjoy you have to enjoy doing that particular exercise right um it it, it will help you tremendously in keeping up the habit um but yeah i wish there was something which i felt like okay i can i i always want to do that i need to get out and and uh, i want to exercise and and because now i feel it again like i'm just sitting so much with with like projects uh, like ramping up and it's really bad and i'm now i kind of can now I, now i realize when when that time happens because my my body tells me a lot earlier when it's time to get out um but it it doesn't always have to be at the last minute of like okay your body is very close to shutting down it's it's one minute to midnight can you like please get up and, and get out I'm, I'm trying to tell this to people to like start earlier and you're gonna have a lot less <coughs> a lot less problems later on so um yeah so that's that's a good yeah. one because i think yeah people need to realize yeah. that and and try to put some of this in before mm. it's too late but I mean, the, the priorities come in, in, in every respect, not only when it comes to, to your physical health, like you also said, mental health, right? It need, there needs the time to be shutting down, to de-stress, to, to change. And, and you need to make the, you need to, to prioritize also um, your, your personal work and your personal time. And, and you have to make sure that you have, you focus time on things that excite you uh, personally and things that you feel like are worth doing. Um, whether that is something completely unrelated to work or whether that is something that, um, that, that is related to personal work, even like working on personal artwork can de-stress, I think, um, a lot because it reconnects you, yeah, it, it, it reconnects you with what you really want to do and why you got into this um, field in the first place right um i mean we've talked about that a lot in the burnout yeah, yeah, exactly, video yeah, exactly it comes back but, to that um, yeah anyway that's i think the the points i have uh, in regards to that so um i hope you guys enjoyed well yeah. i mean actually, sorry you know um <laughs> sorry you want to talk real quick about the um um the open-minded oh, jobs okay, okay. Real quick. maybe maybe so i thought that was a really good point being open yeah i had one last point about being open-minded i'm sorry i'm just jumping the gun here um it's lunchtime and uh, i wrote down being more open-minded and it's something that i try to remind myself um once in a while um i think it came out of out of uh, the experience of like okay i wanted to I wanted to work on, on, on Star Wars and then I did that and then that was done. And then I worked on, oh, I want to work on more movies. And um, I did that and then that working on movies is not always the fun thing it sounds like, right? It's, I think it's often like kind of uh, mentioned as the pinnacle of, of what we do. But the experiences it, while actually working in it are, are sometimes less than stellar. They're less than like what every, it's not always what you dreamt it would be. So I, t I started to be more open about um, where potential jobs could come from. And I, 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 I was very like focused on like, I want to work on movies. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm here to do on this earth. But I was completely Jeez. ignoring that, that actually very interesting uh, job opportunities can come from completely different areas. So I always kind of um, ig ignored or, or tried to avoid getting jobs in like, I don't know, mobile games. Like it's kind of like, a, it's, it's, it's like not a curse word, but it's like, I think a lot of people don't want to work in mobile games. Um, but there, there, there's interesting opportunities and you learn very different things there. Or like I, I did a lot of work for commercials 
or work for um, architectural um, projects and and i found a lot more um I, f i found i found a lot more fun in in those projects than actually in in feature film um so it's just a kind of like you, you never know where the the jobs come from and it, it's i think i i i I tended to say no too quickly to a lot of things that didn't fit into my into my like rule rule set that I had for myself and uh, so I'm trying to be a bit more open these days about like hey this could be interesting and I'm like well hey maybe I should write that company because I really I really enjoy the work the work they're doing on on in terms of the visuals and stuff like that so um i'm also very lucky actually that i'm i'm getting offers from from different kind of companies uh, uh now and um yeah that's kind of i don't know have have you have you do you do much stuff outside the the hollywood um, uh, area you know i i i absolutely agree with that because i think you know being open-minded is This is the key to, you know, getting new experiences mm -hmm. and new experiences mean maybe going out of your comfort zone and doing something new. Like I was doing that, 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 our, um, artwork for Bloomberg magazine right, right, or right. things that I'm not normally, you know, and I've done mobile games, although that wasn't such a good experience, <laughs> but these are all experiences you have to have them mm. in order to say, eh, maybe not, but you know, I'm still open-minded that. Hey, if something else comes along and it sounds like it could be a good collaboration, maybe. Mm. Um, I'm, I think being open-minded is really important, and I think that uh, you never know when your next real opportunity is going to be. Maybe somebody is doing some stage design that could turn into some Cirque du Soleil mm. thing that it could be, very, you know, like that has nothing to do with our industry mm. really, yet you know those things can happen. Right. And I think you have to be open to the experience. Uh, because I almost got a job like that, but it just didn't work out mm. in the last minute. Mm. But I, I was like, yeah, let's try different things. And you never know, because it might steer you into a whole different path. Right, right. Uh, but if you, you know, you're very like, ah, no, I just want to do film. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's good. Because if someone asks you, you're targeted and you know. Mm. But if someone else comes to you and says, hey, we got the stage design. You want to give it a shot? Yeah. I wouldn't say no. And I think that's, you know, because if you say no, then you're just going to get more of the same. Yeah, exactly. But if you say yes, you never know. That could be the next five years. You're living the dream or something. Yeah. You never know. I mean, like you said, so it's, it's a very good point. There. It can it could bring you into an entire new industry or it can ignite a new passion you never knew you had because you just didn't know enough about about this other industry. Right. And I mean, it could be that you completely change your 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 focus after that. Right. And why would you why yeah, would you say yeah. no to to some opportunities like that, right? Um, yeah, and I think a lot of people, like you said, they think it's kind of below them, you yeah, know, like yeah. oh, you know, mobile games, really, you know. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I know films are sexy because that's kind of how you know I know that, but you know, the right mobile game, hey, mm. you know, it could be really cool too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've I've recently talked to a mobile game company, and I'm considering it. Because I'm just like, hey, look, you know, it's about the experience. Mm. It's about who you work mm. with. It's about a whole new chapter, maybe. Right. Definitely. Yeah. And you can't look at a whole chapter if you just stay in the same chapter all the time. Exactly. You just redo the same thing over and over. It's like. Uh... Yeah. So it's going to be the same, mm. right? It's the definition of insanity. You do the same thing. <laughs> that's true. You expect a different result? Yeah. No, it's going to be the same. Exactly. Right. That's that's very true. And uh, I mean, it, you you might you might learn something new, like new software or new ways of doing it, or you actually learn more about that particular industry and what they're looking for and how they work. Right. I mean, you're also going to learn. Um, Because I mean, the, the the way that that you know how how freelancing works in in the movie industry and how everything uh, how work is delivered, how invoices are done, and how how generally the rhythm works, right? But then if you work in a different industry, then it's it's completely different, and you you might have to you will have to learn that not everything works the same way, right? You have to kind of get out of your comfort zone and. And um, maybe there are new, maybe there are way of doing things in the other industry that you think will elevate your your current workflow and stuff you can take from them, from from how they do things and apply it to your own work to to be more distinctive and and be different from the rest, right? Because other people don't have that experience. So um, I think there's a there's really a lot to a lot to learn. Um, 
Yeah, no, I absolutely think that's a, a great trait to have and to to be more open minded really can he can never hurt you to do that. <laughs> no. But I think a lot of people do shut it off. I mean, even mm. some of the people that I mentor now, they're like, Oh, I just want to do film. I'm like, okay, just that's what you want to concentrate mm. on, but be open to other experiences. Yeah, exactly. And right. Kind of see where that goes. Yeah. You know? I think this episode has all been about being open minded. I think in, in more ways yeah, than one, right? Much. It has yeah, been about yeah, in a way you could see Yeah, that, it has yeah. been about about being respectful to other people. It has been about like respect so res it's open your mind. Yeah. Ah, I know what the thumbnail yeah. is to me. Um, it's gonna be like <laughs> oh um, it was about opening I think uh, being respectful to others, being open I mean to yourself, right? Respect yourself. And um um this was very uh, it was very insightful for me. I think I learned a lot about you and uh, that's, myself that's and, good. Um, and same here yeah. and uh, great so let's wrap this up um as usual guys okay. thank you so much for tuning in um please like comment and subscribe if you have new ideas things uh, topics that you want uh, to have uh, discussed by um, us please let us know in the comments please write us email we're getting messages on twitter on instagram on facebook um wherever from people who seem to enjoy the content so please let us know what other stuff you want to hear about and we'll eventually get to it um thanks so much guys and uh, have a good week and see you in the next one